All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Russ O'Brien, and I, uh, I work for Red Hat. Hi, I'm Kyle Mestri. I work for HP. Justin Pettit, I work for Nasira VMware. And uh, today we wanted to discuss uh, OVN, this uh, new project that we started on uh, Opal, open virtual networking uh, for OVS, Open vSwitch. And so we often pronounce the uh, project oven, so you'll see a lot of sort of baking uh, and oven puns kind of throughout. So I assume everybody knows that uh, this, but we just thought I'd level set. So in uh, virtual networking, the idea is that you have, like on the left here, a physical network where you have uh, multiple VMs from different tenants. So let's say you have a green tenant and a purple tenant. And they start up VMs and they end up on different hypervisors. And so you don't really want them to be constrained by the topology that, where they actually get laid out. So you know, this is the physical topology as they get started up. They just might end up on random hypervisors that, um, that are connected with uh, just one, one, uh, one link between them. But they want to be able to actually uh, create topologies that are useful for their network so, uh, or for their, their applications. So in the case of the purple tenant here, they may just want to have a logical switch that connects uh, their three VMs. But the green tenant, uh, they want a more complicated topology, so you have multiple switches and routers. So even though this is a fairly flat topology and it's constrained by the, you know, the, the hardware or the physical limitations, uh, this is much more flexible. So OVN is a, a project where we want to uh, bring virtual networking to OVS. Now, there have been other projects in the past that have done this, but um, you know, we, we uh, we wanted to, uh, we, we have a couple ideas how we might be able to improve over what's currently out there. So it provides the, the usual features that you would want in a, in a virtual network. So you can do uh, create logical switches and routers, uh, security groups, ACLs. We support multiple tunnel overlays. Uh, and we support both Tor-based, top of rack-based, and software-based logical to physical gateways so that you can get the traffic from the logical space out into uh, the physical world. And it works on the same platforms as OVS. So uh, we've been doing most of our testing with Linux, um, with KVM and Zen. Uh, but we've also done some work with containers that Russell will get into. And so from the beginning in the design, uh, we, are, uh, you know, we have support for containers. Uh, we also have a DPDK. DPDK is the uh, Intel project called the Data Path Development Kit, which allows bypassing the kernel and can uh, bring really impressive performance results in some environments. Uh, and then we also have a Hyper-V port um, that will also be supported. And then, of course, we've uh, integrated it with OpenStack, uh, as well as a plan to support other uh, cloud management systems as well. So uh, OVN is being developed by the, the same community that's developed Open vSwitch. Um, it's vendor neutral, as you can tell. We've uh, got multiple vendors working on it, and uh, multiple vendors have contributed in both the architecture and the implementation. Uh, all of the architecture and implementation have been done on public mailing lists. They've all occurred on either the OVS dev mailing list or the Neutron mailing list. Uh, and all of the source code is being released under an Apache license, uh, just like OpenView Switch. So our goals were we wanted to create something that was uh, production quality so that you know, people could actually deploy this. Uh, we felt that having a straightforward design was pretty important. Um, because you know, our goal is to actually scale this out to thousands of hypervisors, um, and each of those hypervisors will have multiple VMs and containers running on them. So the, the scale is really important to get right. And we also think that we can get better performance and stability over the uh, existing plugins that are available for, uh, for OpenStack right now. So a couple things that make uh, Oven different than what some of the other projects have. Um, one is that uh, we won't have a requirement that multiple agents be installed on the hypervisor. So there will be one uh, oven daemon that's, that's installed. And uh, for things like um, routing and um, IP management, um, those will all be done in uh, oven controller, uh, which is uh, one of the daemons that we'll be running. And uh, we think that this makes the architecture much simpler, and it'll be easier to debug, and I think it'll improve the scale as well. Uh, security groups uh, are going to be uh, using the new uh, OVS construct uh, with using in-kernel connection tracking. And that's uh, significantly faster and more secure than the current options available uh, for uh, using OVS to implement uh, security groups. And I actually have a talk at 9.50 on Thursday where we'll be talking about um, how that works and um, the performance improvements that we've seen. And this isn't just limited to Oven. It's also going to be um, available for um, any, anybody else that wants to use OVS. Uh, but we'll use it from the beginning. And we'll also be doing, uh, for the gateways, we'll have a DPDK-based um, gateway, as well as hardware-accelerated ones. 
So we have, we've been working on this OVS DPDK port for a while, uh, which allows uh, really imp impressive performance numbers when we are uh, sending traffic, especially like physical to physical um, links. Um, and we're working on the speed of getting traffic in and out of VMs. Uh, but that's looking very promising for, um, for uh, you know, near native or hardware speeds um, using just uh, commodity processors. Uh, and then it also uses this VTEP schema, which we had published uh, a couple of years ago uh, for uh, Open vSwitch, which allows uh, physical top of rack devices to uh, participate in logical networks. And so we'll be able to work with switches from Arista, Brocade, Cumulus, Dell, HP, Juniper, and Lenovo. Okay. So. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So. Uh, I guess we wanted to talk a bit about why, why is Oven important to OpenStack and specifically Neutron. So um, right now, there, there, are, there actually are quite a few different open source implementations. And there's also the default built-in uh, open source implementation right now that is agent-based at this point. Um, and effectively, that's really, that's really just a custom virtual networking control plane at this point. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do is we're actually looking to, to, to split that out of Neutron into, into its separate Git repository under the Neutron project as well, um, because we, we kind of feel that, that long-term Neutron should be this API and database layer. It shouldn't be implementing an SDN controller itself. So there's, there's lots of different open source options. Oven is one here as well, and so we think that that's ultimately long-term, that's where we think that, that this is going. Yeah, and it, so. um, if, if we're looking at what uh, a future default uh, open source backend uh, for Neutron would be. Um, well, first of all, I, I think that there, there has to be a strong open source option. And I think uh, Oven makes a whole lot of sense as something that could be a, a new default. In fact, uh, a migration from, from using the existing uh, default um, backends for Neutron to Oven is, is actually quite natural because uh, if you're already using Open vSwitch, this is effectively just gradually taking advantage of more <coughs> functionality that the Open vSwitch community is developing. Um, so I think that makes a whole lot of sense. And this is something that Kyle was just talking about. There, there's been ongoing work to make uh, Neutron more of a platform and trying to get away from, uh, from in implementing the, uh, the SDN controller itself. And so uh, Oven fits nicely into this model. And so at this point, let's, let's get into, start talking a little bit about, about the architecture and, and the different pieces, that, the actual code that we have. Um, so the, the way this works with Neutron is so far we have an ML2 driver, um, and that replaces the use of the OVS ML2 driver and also the use of Neutron's OVS agent uh, because you use uh, the oven um, uh, daemons instead. Today, based on our current status, and we'll get more into the current status in a bit, uh, it still uses Neutron's L3 and DHCP agents, but that's just that we're, we're still uh, working on implementing those things in oven, and as we get there, those agents will no longer be used. So one of the things that we recognized that was going to be very important was when designing Oven was that it needed to scale. And that's usually where these, these systems fall down is uh, when, they, when they try to get a large number of hypervisors with a large number of VMs. And so we've actually um, implemented this, a couple of these systems. And so we took sort of the lessons that we learned from that and, uh, and put that into the design of Oven. So first of all, uh, the core configuration is actually done through databases. And databases are a pretty well understood concept, you know, how to, how to distribute them, how to make access to them, they're very fast. Uh, and so you know, the, the core configuration goes um, through a set of two different databases. Um, then on the, on the hypervisor, there's a local controller uh, that is responsible for taking some of the logical state and converting it to physical. And the reason that we did that is that um, when building centralized controllers, we've noticed that, um, that this ends up actually being a very hard problem because on each one of the different hypervisors, its view of the physical network looks different from, from another hypervisor. So for example, if you want to get to hypervisor one from hypervisor two, you might go out OpenFlow port three. But on hypervisor five, you might go out port two. And so that central controller has to figure out how the view of each one of those um, is, is separate and has to figure, out that comp figure that out and then push it down to each one of the hypervisors. And it's very complicated and sort of slow and error prone, especially as you start having um, things changing. You know, so if those open flow port numbers change, for example, it can be very slow to sort of update that. And so that's why we went with this, this local controller. And the other nice thing about that then is that 
that the same state can be then sent to all the different hypervisors. You don't have to create the same views, and that makes the, the, the replication much, much simpler. Uh, in the databases, we have sort of have two, two sets. There's the, the, uh, the desired state, which is sort of the high level. Uh, you create a logical switch that has these logical ports attached to it. And then there's the runtime state. Where did this logical port uh, appear on a, you know, which hypervisor? And then how do you get to that hypervisor? And so by separating that, uh, you can treat that data differently. So the, the desired state, you want that to be persistent, but the runtime state is a little bit, um, is not necessary. And so in it, you can also play with um, how quickly you need to update each of these, which should help at scale as well. And then another thing that we've been looking at is um, how we group things together. So it's, with many of these systems, when you, um, or when you start having a lot of policies, if you, if you take the policies, if you have two hypervisors or two VMs, let's say, and they want to have policies about connecting to different sy systems, and then you have different ACLs on each of them, if you created um, the, if you, if you expanded all of the combinations, you end up with this Cartesian product with a huge number of flows, which creates a lot of state that you have to copy from, uh, from one system to another, which is very expensive and slow and error prone. Um, and also then when that traffic gets then pushed down to OVS or that configuration gets pushed down to OVS, it ends up being fairly expensive for OVS because now you have all of these flows. So we'll also be using some new features in OVS uh, that allow us to avoid that and, and write um, better flows to avoid it. So uh, this is the oven architecture. Um, ben Pfaff uh, has always criticized this slide because we have the northbound and the southbound and so it's uh, tilted sideways so I put a, a compass here for him. <laughs> so, if we want to go from uh, the north here on the left, um, the, uh, in the purple box, that's where the OpenStack plugin exists. And it's going to um, speak to this northbound database. The northbound database is where the, is that sort of desired state. So this logical port exists and that this, uh, a part of a logical switch and then this set of logical switches attached to this logical router. All of that is in the northbound database. And so it's, you know, it's fairly slow moving state. And that's something that should definitely be persistent. Uh, then we have this uh, daemon here, oven north D. And that, that is centralized. And you can imagine actually distributing that out across multiple of them. But there, the point is that there's much fewer of them than there are hyper hypervisors and uh, end nodes. And so what uh, oven north D is responsible for doing is taking the, this desired state and then creating logical flows. So it would uh, create. A flow table, for example, that says if it has a certain destination uh, MAC address, send it to this logical port. But it doesn't calculate where that logical port is because we don't act it doesn't actually know because the logical port may not have been created yet um, on any of these hypervisors. And uh, I have an example that should make this a little bit clearer later. And so now in the, um, if we move to the oven controller, this is that local controller I mentioned. And there's one of these for each one of the hypervisors. And the oven controller is responsible for registering that runtime state um, through the southbound database. So for example, when the, the hypervisor comes up, it will register itself and say, um, in the southbound database, you know, I'm HV1. If you want to reach me, you can use the Genev protocol, and I'm available on a particular IP address. And then when a VM pops up, it says, well, the VM has this logical port. This logical port is available on HV1. And then the other systems that if, it, if this VM has a logical port that's on a logical switch that is uh, shared with a logical port on this system, um, the oven controller is then responsible for noticing, oh, I care about this logical port, and so I should update my flow table appropriately so that any traffic that needs to go from um, this logical port to this logical port um, needs to use the Genev tunnel to uh, hypervisor one. And so then with this oven controller, um, you have it speak OVSDB to the OVSDB server here and OpenFlow to the OVSV switch D. You don't have a central controller that is speaking OpenFlow all the way down. Uh, so these next couple slides are really just for people who want to look at this offline. It just goes over the same thing about the, um, the databases and the daemons. So here's an example. The purple tables uh, are the, the, from the northbound database. And so you can see we have a, a logical switch table and that has a logical switch registered with two logical ports, LP1 and LP2. And then in the logical port table, uh, we have the MAC addresses listed AA and BB. And so you'll notice that you know, as things start happening in the system, this, this state never changes. And even if like, all of the hypervisors were shut down, none of this changes. 
then Oven North D was responsible for generating this pipeline. So we'd created just a simple logical switch that connected LP1 and LP2. So there's just these, these logical flows that were written. It says, uh, eth dest, if the destination Ethernet address is AA, then send it to logical port 1. If it's to BB, send it to logical port 2. And if it's a broadcast, send it to both logical ports. The, um, and then oven controller then will be responsible later on for when these ports start showing up for writing these as open flow rules, sending to the appropriate open flow port. So in this, case, in this example, we have two hypervisors. They started up and they registered in the southbound database, um, HV1 and HV2. They both want to use the Genev protocol and this is their IP addresses about how they're reachable. And uh, right now, we, um, there's a uh, LP1, which is going to be associated with a VM, and it's running on hypervisor 1, HV1. So let's say that suddenly uh, LPT, LP2 shows up on hypervisor 2. Uh, now what will happen is the oven controller that's running on HV1 will notice that LP2 is reachable from HV2. So if it doesn't already have a tunnel, it would create a tunnel to uh, 10.0.0.11 over the Genev protocol. Um, and then it would then modify the, um, the open flow ports so that if you want to reach LP2, which has this BB address, uh, it would write an open flow rule that, that is very similar to this, and then, uh, and then with an action that says send it out the, the open flow port uh, that is, matches that tunnel that is where LP2 is. And then similarly, if there's a broadcast, um, write a flow that sends the traffic um, out that tunnel port. So uh, all of this is actually documented in this oven architecture man page that's available on the, um, in the OVS repo, in the, oven, um, in the oven repo in particular, or the oven branch. And so the configuration was done through those northbound and southbound databases, and so their man pages, the oven NB and oven SB, um, that describe those, uh, um, those databases. And so when you build oven, it will, uh, it will generate those man pages. And so the, right now, we have a special oven branch that contains the oven source code, uh, but we'll actually be merging that fairly soon into the, uh, the main OVS repo. So uh, we hit our first milestone, the, the Easy Bake release, we called it. And you know, we kind of felt that this was a, a good way to describe the release, because it really isn't much more than like a 100-watt light bulb sitting in a, in a plastic toy. Um, in that it, it's not really capable, but it shows that, that we're going in the direction that we, that we want. And so we, we announced the project in January, um, but it took us a little while before we actually had the time to start writing the code. So from the start of writing the code to the first ping was about six weeks. And we feel pretty good about that because this wasn't just something that we hacked together um, to, to make Oven work. We built, this, we built the architecture the way that we wanted. So we're making um, actual um, C-based uh, IDL calls to OVSDB. We're uh, act, acting as an open flow controller that speaks to the OVS. We're not using scripts to call out to these things. So it's actually built in a fairly robust way. Um, but you know, this is a, a first milestone, so it obviously needs more testing, and we haven't tried scaling yet. Uh, which is you know, probably where a lot of the, the effort will be going into OVS once we, or OVN once we get the um, features in that we want. And speaking of the features, we plan on having um, those available by the end of the year. And uh, once we get back from the conference, we're going to start coding again. So expect pretty rapid uh, progress on the, on the project. OK, so um, we've, we've talked about the, the architecture of, of Oven, and uh, we also wanted to kind of show it in the context of Neutron. So this is from a, in terms of what services are running in, in your uh, typical Neutron deployment using the, the default reference implementation. The, these are all the services that you would see. Um, with the current status of Oven, of what we've implemented so far, um, this is what it looks like. And it, what it replaces is the use of that, of that Layer 2 agent or the OVS agent that runs on every hypervisor. And eventually, uh, as we implement the features that we've talked about by the end of the year, it will replace the use of um, those other agents there, the, the L3 agent and, and the DHCP agent. Um, there, there, there likely may be some, some other things running, uh, depending on what advanced Neutron services you're using and, and what backend's used for that. Uh, that's, that's not currently uh, uh, one of the goals for Oven uh, just yet, but, but that's what it looks like. OK, so well, we said we reached a functional milestone, uh, which means that you can, uh, in fact, try it out if you would like. So I want, to sh I want to talk about a few things that you can do to try it out. So the first thing, and the absolute simplest way to try this out, is to use a thing called OVS Sandbox. And I I've personally found this incredibly useful 
for, for multiple reasons. First of all, uh, incredibly useful for learning about OVS itself, uh, incredibly useful as a development environment for working on Oven, um, but it's also, a, it's just a good educational tool for, for, for learning about OVS and, and now Oven as well, because we've added some, some basic Oven support to it. So the way that you, that you run this is you check out the OVS Git tree. Uh, you gotta switch to the, uh, the OVN branch right now because it's still on a branch and, until it goes into the, to the master branch and you compile it which looks like compiling any other C project and then you run make sandbox. Um, oven support is optional with, the, with OVS sandbox so you pass this flag here to turn that on and once you have this running you, you're in this dummy um, OVS environment with a dummy switch you can run all the commands that you would normally run but um, you know it's not actually doing anything and you can, you can throw it away quickly. So once you have the sandbox running, you can run, like I said, you can run the commands, and OVN comes with a new command, which you see uh, the, most, the, the top commands there. It's OVN northbound control, and what you do here, uh, what, we have the, the, what these commands are doing here is at first we're creating a logical switch, then we're creating two logical ports that are on that logical switch. We're setting a MAC address on each of those ports, and then we're creating um, that port on uh, in OVS, uh, so that's uh, you know that, that corresponds with the logical port. So that those are the commands that we need to run. Now the next thing you can do in the sandbox environment, which I have found uh, very very useful for my own uh, understanding and, and, and testing and so forth, is is using this command to generate like a, a fake packet through the system. And so what this command says is, um, if a if a packet were to come in on br int and it came in on uh, open flow port one with a source MAC address of one and a destination MAC address of two, um, you know, what would happen? And, and the output of this command shows you uh, the processing at open flow uh, and, the, and the result. So let's take an actual look at that. So make sandbox. And here we see the, you know, the output of this it says now you're in a dummy open vSwitch environment and you can run commands to do some things. So now I'm going to run the commands I showed you before uh, to create a couple of logical ports. And now I'm going to run that other command which uh, generates that packet. Now you get a, you get a good bit of output here. Uh, at the very top of it, uh, it, it shows um, that we started with uh, what I said before, uh, the, 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 a packet with a, a source of source MAC of one, a destination MAC of two. Um, but uh, just, just to show you the um, interesting thing here, this line shows that the, the final action was output to um, uh, open flow port two. So that's interesting, and it's also especially interesting uh, for, for debugging or learning it in a more complex setup. So you can take this and, and create multiple, multiple log logical switches and ports and, and then see how, um, the, what, what the resulting open flow looks like. Okay, so that's one thing, that you, one way you can try it, but it, it may be that you'd like to try this with some, um, some actual network traffic, and maybe you wanna even try it with OpenStack. So what we have uh, developed integration with OpenStack uh, in parallel with uh, OVN itself. And so if you want to try this with DevStack, the, you know, the thing that everyone uses to set up, some, set up an OpenStack development environment, you clone the DevStack Git repo, you clone our Neutron driver repo, uh, and then you go into DevStack. So DevStack uses a local.conf configuration file. Our, our Git repo has two sample configuration files that set everything up that you need. So you grab one or the other. The, the local.conf.sample, that's the one that you would use on, on your first node, sort of the, the, all, the typical all-in-one dev stack environment that, that runs most of OpenStack, but also configures it with OVN as the back end. If you want to add additional compute nodes, then on the rest of them, you would grab our other configuration sample, which sets it up with a very minimal set of services. It just runs the, uh, the OVN controller, and the Nova Compute Service uh, to add additional compute nodes to your environment. And then you run stack.sh and let it, let it go and set everything up. And it turns out that I actually have exactly this running on my laptop, and I will prove to you that it works. So um, in this tab here, this is you know, the Horizon web interface, and it shows that we have two hypervisors, and they're called, uh, I apologize if you can't read it, but I'll tell you what it's, what it's showing you in, in, in any case. It has two hypervisors, that's the two rows in this table here, that's OVN dev stack one and OVN dev stack two, and the, the final column there says instances, and it says that there's one instance running on each hypervisor. And each of those are, um, like I said, each of those is a, is a virtual machine on my laptop. And this is another part of the Horizon web interface, and this is the, the graphical representation of the, of the logical network topology. Um, the, the network topology is the, is the default networks that cre get, get created by DevStack. And on the far right there that you see there are two instances or two VMs that have been created and attached to that, um, to that logical network. 
and, uh, the, and, and one of those is on each of the VMs. So now let's take a look at a terminal and uh, see if it's actually doing what I said it was doing. So first I'm going to SSH into my, uh, my, uh, my, hyper, uh, my, my first hypervisor. This is, the, this is the main dev stack node that's running most of OpenStack and it has, uh, it has connectivity into the, the logical network where the VMs are running. And I will show you uh, with the Nova command that there are in fact these two VMs running uh, with an address of 10.0.0.7 and 10.0.0.6. So let's, let's, t let's just ping them and, and see if they're alive. 10.0.0.7 uh, is on, 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 this, on this local hypervisor. And there's Kirby dancing because he's excited that this is working. Okay, and then we'll ping the other one. And this one is on the, the second hypervisor. So this ping actually has to traverse the, the Genev protocol to get um, over there. And that, in fact, works as well. And Kirby is still pretty excited about it. Okay, uh, and, if, and I can also um, SSH into my VM, and this, uh, and then once that comes up, yay, I'm inside my, uh, my my VM, and then I can also connect over to the second one. And again, this to, for this to work, I'm I'm going over a, a tunnel to um, to the VM that's running on the second hypervisor. So now I'm now I think I'm like four SSH connections deep, uh, going through uh, the networking that was set up by by OVN. Okay, back to the, uh, the slides, and, and I want to have a few more comments about what else that you can do um, uh, with, with OVN today. And so Justin mentioned that from the very beginning that containers were, were a goal and having good container integrations. So there's two ways that you can use this with containers. And the first one is, um, is to create overlaid networks for your containers. So wherever your containers are running, maybe you create a bunch of VMs in an OpenStack cloud and then you want to set up some, uh, some overlaid networks between them, uh, you, can, you can install OVN within those VMs and, and use it to do that. That's fine. But, but, but perhaps a little bit more interesting to me, and this is not something that um, that is so common. I'm not sure if, if, if anyone's done something like this, but if you have an OpenStack cloud and it happens to be backed by OVN, and uh, you, you, know, you use the Neutron API to define networks and ports and, and, and to define connectivity, wouldn't it be nice if you could use that same interface to create the networks for your containers as well? And so that's something that we have uh, implemented. You can uh, create a new networks and ports, and you, and you tell Neutron a special thing that says that this this port is actually uh, a special container port that resides inside of a VM. And then inside those VMs, we use open, we, uh, use open vSwitch to um, allow the hypervisor to differentiate the traffic that comes from either the VM itself or the containers inside of that VM. And the result is that you can have arbitrary networks uh, defined for those containers. Uh, and, the, and those networks don't have to be attached to the VM itself. Um, and, and it's implemented by the, the underlying OVN, instead of creating yet another layer of overlay, we're using an um, oven underneath sort of to implement those networks and should result in much better performance. And it lets you use the same interface for the networking for your VMs and the containers inside of that. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. So what is next? All right, so obviously we need to start uh, attacking the, uh, the remaining features left uh, that we said we would have by the end of the year. So uh, this isn't really in any particular order, but one of the highest priorities is that we need to get security groups using that in-kernel contract feature so that, uh, that we can actually have uh, security groups working with OVN. Uh, I had mentioned this, this VTEP schema that allows us to work with uh, physical top of racks. And so we've actually made some pretty good progress on, uh, on writing that code that will make it so that we have physical gateways. Uh, there is an existing OVS emulator um, that will make OVS act as a VTEP. So um, once that works, then we'll actually have a software alternative. Um, but something that's kind of interesting that we've been working on is we have a DPDK-based version of that as well, which should actually be significantly faster um, because of the type of traffic that it's, that it's sending. Uh, and so uh, that should be going out on the list fairly soon as well. Uh, we plan on having L3 routing and uh, IPAM uh, built into oven controller. And uh, just like it's important for OpenStack, uh, we, really, uh, you know, we really pride ourselves on the amount of testing that we do for, for OVS. So if you run make check on, uh, on OVS, it runs about 1,800 unit tests. And we want to bring that to OVN as well. And so we've uh, started building a new framework that allows us to, to bring up oven instances and actually create arbitrary topologies and, um, so that you can, in user space, create tunnels and send traffic between them and write tests over that. And then, uh, then, as we've mentioned a couple times now, we should be merging OVN into the master branch fairly soon. 
All right, and so on the, the Neutron integration side, uh, things are in pretty good shape for, um, for what's implemented in Oven today. As, as additional features get implemented in Oven, then we'll be doing the Neutron side of that as well. So for example, we'll, we'll need to implement an L3 service plugin as that, that functionality is, is available. Um, we have a good plan for how security groups will be implemented, but we're, um, we're waiting for that the corresponding functionality to be available in OVS and Oven. Uh, we have a Tempest CI job uh, in OpenStax CI infrastructure that, that runs the, the full test suite against it, but like, um, like Justin said, we had uh, only been when coding for, uh, for six weeks before we hit this milestone. And we have, uh, so this, this job just got created, and I haven't had time to, to figure out uh, the problems with it, but it's there, and so once we get back, we'll go through and, and make sure that that's all passing. And another thing I would like to do is create a, a multi-node CI job in the OpenStack test infrastructure to make sure that uh, we don't break any of the, the important connectivity between multiple hypervisors. All right, and then longer term, I just want to mention a couple of things that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So one is this DPDK um, gateway that I mentioned. And so um, right now, the, we're currently just using the VTEP schema in order to configure the gateways. But the, gate, the, the VTEP schema is sort of constrained right now to uh, work with top of rack ASICs, which oftentimes don't have the functionality that we would need for you know, true stateful services. So we're looking that once we get that, that working, we will start to um, maybe move away from the VTEP schema for the DPDK-based gateway. And uh, so that we can do things like uh, failover, scale out, and more stateful services. Uh, there's also been a lot of interest from, uh, especially for in the NFV market, about using OVS and DPDK uh, to, to send traffic in and out of VMs um, and to get traffic, you know, to, to create appliances using OVS and DPDK. And I think this will end up being actually a reference implementation for a lot of those because we'll be building this in-house, and so we'll be uh, so we'll be getting a lot of testing from the the core uh, OVS developers as well as the the community that we have as well. And um, and then also just the, the you know, we're pretty happy with the architecture that we came up with. And we think that we're going to be able to build a lot on top of this. So right now, we're just sort of going off after the, the basic features that you need to have to do uh, basic virtual networking. Uh, but we're looking at how we can add additional things you know, so that we can do um, new networking and security features, um, which I, I think will be pretty interesting. So uh, how can you help? Um, give it a try and test it. Uh, if you want to contribute, we would love it. Um, if you have any uh, bugs, especially if you try it at scale, um, let us know. We'll, uh, we'll jump right on it and uh, address those. Uh, so uh, Core OVN is being developed on the OVS dev mailing list, which has a link there. And uh, the IRC channel pound open vSwitch uh, has both OVN and open vSwitch discussions. And uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific on Thursdays, we actually have a regular OVN meeting where we talk about the progress. So if anyone's interested, um, you know, uh, feel free to look at either of those sources. Cool, and on the, the Neutron plugin side, um, for Oven, we have, a, we have a Git repo. It's, it's in Stackbridge at the moment. Uh, it's, being, uh, it, it's been approved to be moved into the OpenStack namespace, and, and, and we'll be moving shortly, so it'll become OpenStack Networking OVN. Um, and we, we, we talk about it on the OpenStack dev mailing list, where the rest of OpenStack development is discussed, if anyone would like to discuss further. And then we also have a, uh, a separate IRC channel where we're, where we're talking about the Neutron integration, and that channel tends to be fairly active with those of us that are, that are working on that. And with that, um, uh, thank you very much. And, and, and we can, I, I don't know what time it is. I don't know how much we should yeah, have. we time, time for questions. And okay. also, um, if Ben could raise his hand, there's uh, Ben there. And he, uh, he has stickers, uh, OVN stickers. So if anyone uh, yeah, wants so, one, feel so, free to. <laughs> so afterwards, come, come, uh, come, come find Ben uh, out, outside there. And uh, he has cool stickers. And there's, there's one featured on my laptop here in the bottom corner. They're very cool. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, so, so the question was related to containers. And uh, because containers tend to be fairly short-lived, how would we um, deal with sort of the, the creation and destruction of them rapidly? And that's something that we've thought about a, a fair amount, actually. And so the, you know, I think this is going to be a problem regardless of the, 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 the platform. 
But uh, one, we've talked to a lot of the, the container uh, vendors, and one of the things that we've, one approach that we've been talking to them about is basically pre-allocating some logical ports ahead of time and so that they're pre-configured. And then when they start up a container that wants to join something, they can just plug in something that's already available. And there's just no traffic otherwise, but it, um, yeah, it makes it so it's much less heavyweight to bring it up and down. Good. Yeah, so the question was, are the OVS vSwitchD and OVS DB server untouched? And they are. Um, so we're using stock OVS and OVS DB server. Uh, we will probably only support the latest versions of OVS. So for example, the, um, the uh, often delayed uh, OVS 2.4 um, will be a requirement in order to have the connection tracking. Uh, and, um, you know, and then the um, conjunctive match, which is how we do some of that grouping that I mentioned um, to prevent the Cartesian product. Um, that's also an OVS 2.4 feature. So I think right now we're, we're targeting the latest version of OVS. We'll see if we need to, to figure out alternatives. You know, so if, you know, if we have to support older versions, then we can maybe use a less secure way to, to set up firewall rules or you know, do the Cartesian product. We'd like to avoid that, but, but right now we're planning on. But yeah, but we won't require any changes to OVS. So, so we have a question back here at the microphone, actually. Uh, yeah, if you could go back to the OVN architecture slide, I was wondering where does OVN North D, where is that running if it's not like on the hypervisor? This one? Uh, so it, I guess in a typical OpenStack environment, you have like some control nodes and you have, and then you have your compute nodes. So it would be running on one or several of your control nodes is the idea. Uh, so the question was, um, you know, what's the interface from from Neutron uh, into to OVN, and it does use OVSDB, and and we're not we're not doing call out to command line tools. We're actually using the Python OVSDB library and and speaking the OVSDB protocol to the system. Um, yeah, so I guess the, the question is, you know, the interaction. Um, yeah, from Neutron, it's, it's OBSDB talking to the northbound database. That's the, that's the interface from Neutron. Um, you don't get to OpenFlow until you get down to the oven controller. That's the part that's, that converts the, the logical um, uh, desired state into, the, uh, into OpenFlow for that hypervisor. It's not related at all, I don't think. This is, this is not using it. An SDN controller outside. This is using this, right? So there's no effect on someone else using it, right? Are you talking about using an SDN controller to control Open vSwitch at the same time as? No. Okay. So, so I think that the, yeah. I mean, you guys are more plugged yeah. than I am, but I think the, the question was just yeah. how, how does, I, I think, was your perception that, that there's something here that's speaking OpenFlow directly? Because what we're doing here is that there's, there's database calls that go from OpenStack that, prov that configure the, the switch. And there's no open flow until you get to this local controller. And it's just speaking between these two, these two points. Question in front. So the question was, why did we choose uh, Genev for the, the tunneling protocol? And so we actually support multiple uh, tunnel formats. Um, I used Genev just because I think it's sort of the, you know, it's a, it's a good one going forward. We did limit the, the number of protocols due to the amount of metadata that's available. So um, we require at least STT uh, for, so STT has a 64-bit uh, uh, 64 uh, identifier or a tunnel key. And for um, Genev, it has a 24-bit plus TLVs, and so we're going to use TLVs. We support VXLAN for those VTEPs that I mentioned for the gateways, just because a lot of top of racks support VXLAN. If we need to support other tunnel formats, then we may, um, but then we'll probably have reduced functionality because of the reduced uh, key size. Yeah. So I think we have one, time for one more, maybe. You'd mentioned uh, scale testing is a big, uh, big next milestone for you guys, and mentioned kind of thousand host environments. Can you dig a little bit deeper on the plans there? Well, I mean, I think that um, you know we, we've had to, well, at least for VMware, we've had to build these systems before, and so we have some experience building emulators. So I imagine that we will uh, create an emulator that will create like light, white, lightweight hypervisors, um, and then you know on a on a single in a single piece of hardware that would um, emulate multiple of them. Uh, but 
you know, I'm hoping that you know, other people start um, wanting to use OVN and then that they'll actually be running it in production because you know, we're not obviously, you know, we're a fairly small development team and we don't have thousands of, uh, of systems to try running this on, so. All right, we have one minute, so last question. <laughs> okay. uh, quick one. Um, how does it interact with the uh, L3? Because uh, they use tables differently. So if you're going to program the flows from underneath, then would it not interfere with uh, the table 3, 4, 5, which L3 agent and this DBS use? How does, it, how does it interface with the, the, the layer 3 yeah, agent for, for Neutron? Yeah. Um, well, it, it, well, it works. Um, it, it uses a separate uh, a separate bridge uh, for, for 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 most of the programming, if I, if I understand right. So, um, I, I don't think it inter I don't think it interferes. I think all right. We, we're getting cut. So um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you all very much. Thanks.